Just a quick recap on this video here, this Prevo. We went, we took our old bus, Lenny, the 1947 uh, Silversides over there to work on it. Had a stuck parking brake. We found all kinds of problems with the air system. So we got the parking brake released on it and fixed and we had, we're heading back to the shop to, to work on it. Smells nice too. Mm -hmm. Tastes like milk. Two percent. I wish I had some Oreos. <laughs> So the air system had tons of water in it. The air dryer was not purging. It wasn't so, it wasn't kicking, expelling any moisture. So we got into it, we tore into the air dryer. We checked it, make sure there was nothing wrong with it. All the seals were good on the uh, ejector on it, but everything looked fine on there. But uh, we're gonna rebuild the valve here on it, get all the new parts on it, put new desiccant filter in it too. Uh, and then we gotta figure out why the air dryer is not purging. Uh, it's, it's a signal coming from somewhere else. So we're gonna get into the governor. We're gonna replace the governor. So after we replaced the governor, it still wasn't purging. So the air compressor is the problem, the unloader valves on it. There was no rear engine access on this. They covered over it. So the guys came out and cut a hole in the floor for us. Um, the guys with the band had a little fun doing that for us. We pulled out the air compressor here and we'll see what we got. I'm gonna grab a half inch wrench. Let's take these little fittings off of here. This was just open, right? There was no hose on it, nothing. Yeah. Well, getting through the rear engine access and getting in there, we could see that the air compressor had no clean filtered air for the intake. The hose had come off, so it's just been sucking dirt, dirt right through the compressor on it, which probably added to the wear and why it was passing oil uh, and something going on inside of it, too. Yeah, well, the unloaders, that's what tells us to purge and to stop making air. Uh, definitely bad inside there. So that O-ring is coming out of there. And then, obviously, the this is a balances between the two, and it's because this one was flopped out of its positioning. So you're going to pull this plate out. That spring is going to kind of come fly in. unloader out so we split it in half I can push the top half up Put a little air in this hole here and pop it out. Pull it out of the magnet. There we go. Look at that. So we have another compressor on this engine in the shop that I, I need, the air intake needs to come off of it because it looks like it's missing a bolt. So I'll show you what the unloader is supposed to look like. So you notice the broken off bolt on the air intake of this air compressor. So we're going to take it apart. And extract the bolt. And then look at the inside of this. What the hell? Oh. 
Are you squishy? You look squishy. Are they acorns? doing what it's going to do. <laughs> that one doesn't look much better than the one we just took off. But yeah, I think, I think, I think they're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well that was a fail to show you what it was supposed to look like. Um, we found a, a reman air compressor, our friend Brandon over at Cardinal Coach, uh, Warsaw, North Carolina had one, so we bought that off of him. Um, so we're just going to replace it instead of just redoing the unloader on it because uh, it was passing a little bit of oil too. Let's just put a new one on there and be done with it. Okay, there's our reman compressor. We got to swap the drive gear over. We got these gear pullers that are very tiny. I'll get back behind there to pull that drive gear off of there. Got to go through and put all the plumbing. Make sure it's the same like that. It needs to be plugged off and swap the fittings over and stuff. something on there so we got a cotter pin through there so the new compressor came with a little baggie and in it was all the new little plugs and a new gasket for the governor on there so we got like plugs that go on there there we currently are open and that's what the unloader is supposed to look like So this compressor, when it's installed, it lays over on its side about the way it is right now. This is actually an oil drain hole here, so that one's not a bolt hole. So it looks like you know, there's a bolt hole pattern on a gasket, but that one's the drain hole. And because this one lays on its side, it's on the bottom. If you used a different, different one that went vertically, then the oil drain hole would be over here. And this thing, the motor here would fill up with oil and oil would come out from everywhere on there. So you gotta always make sure that you do that. I never use Permatex on this gasket. Um, we have new gaskets here for it, but don't put Permatex on it because if you plug that hole up, then the oil can't drain out of the compressor. Too much oil gets in there in the crankcase and then it causes all kinds of problems. So this is called a PP1 valve. This is what all spring brake vehicles use. So there's three ports on it. Well, technically four. One's an exhaust where the air comes out of the bottom. Another one is the supply, so the air pressure coming in, and then two of these are used for delivery. So the delivery would go to the brake cans themselves or sometimes to a gauge or something as well to let you know the parking brake uh, isn't on anymore. But uh, the way it works is when air goes into it um, and when you set the release the parking brake, it sends air pressure here and it goes into the can which pushes the spring back and holds the brakes off. And then when you come to somewhere to park, you put turn this off, that air that's holding back the spring discharges and comes out the bottom here and then the springs are, are holding the brakes into place. That's how all spring brakes work. This bus has what's called a PP2 valve on it, which still has those same, the top half, it's the same. So it's got the supply and then two deliveries, one going to the parking brake can. This one here was going to a gauge. Um, and then uh, the exhaust is still on the bottom, but on the bottom half here, there's an extra delivery port uh, down here that delivers in a different stage there. So this is used for spring brakes. This is used for DD3s. This bus has spring brakes on it. So somebody used to have DD3s from the factory. So somebody's converted it to springs. And when they did that, they're still using the PP2. So we had to order a new PP2 valve here that has that extra chamber uh, delivery port on the bottom for a different position. 
So that goes on here. That's PP2. That's PP1. I said the top halves are exactly the same. It's just the bottom part that's different. Uh, but it won't work the way they have it hooked up on here. So we have to stick with the original valve on here. So we had to order a couple different things to get it figured out. Surprised it's pumping it up that high. Where's the gauges at? Want to turn the fast idle on? I don't know where it is. <laughs> I'll just give it a little throttle. <laughs> Building pretty fast. I'm gonna go back and catch the air dryer purging. Okay. Shut it off. What was it at when it went off? Okay. So the air governor has a setting up underneath that little dome cap on the bottom there. You take that off, there's a screw in there. And if you run it in, every quarter turn it, it'll lower the air pressure four PSI. We're gonna turn it in three quarters of a revolution to bring it down about 12 PSI. It, it was popping off a little bit too high. So we're installing these pull chain drains on all of his air tanks. So the air dryer is going to purge the moisture out of the new air going in and the desiccant will remove it. Uh, but there's still moisture all throughout his whole system. And you still need to drain your tanks all the time. But where these tanks are located on the Prevo, you just can't get up under there. Um, you'd have to jack up your bus every day to drain them daily. So we put these in the bottom. Now we remote run these little wires. We can pull them and drain the moisture out of all of his tanks. And we got four tanks on there that we need to drain daily. And that's going to help get the rest of the moisture out of the system and continue to do that. Make sure that he does it uh, bef before and after each trip. We're going to do it twice daily right now. Okay. That wasn't too bad. Just let it piss out forever. Drain all the air. That's my idea, yeah. <laughs> Alright, okay. we're gonna pull that sight glass for the radiator out. We're gonna pull that out and clean it. We can't really see it very well. It's pretty nasty. This was the air intake hose. You can see how dirty it is. We're gonna replace it. We don't wanna just, uh, there's no way to really clean that out very good, I don't think. And it's really nasty inside. It don't look so good on the outside either, to be honest. But it needs to have the spring in it so it doesn't collapse the suction on it. That's the other end of the hose coming off of the air filter housing. That's gross. So I got a brand new piece of this inch and a quarter flexible. The gate's green stripe.
You can tell the coolant level there, right about the middle. Or not. <laughs> it's just a, it looked like it. So we're going to get it all cleaned up. I mean, that's way better than it was. Yeah. Some uh, stable rust stopper. <laughs> Let me try to get something to scrub at it with. Is there a brush? Put a little Permatex on the threads. You got it. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Well, he's all taken care of now. Uh, I need to start sending out some of these cores that I got around here, sent out to get rebuilt on these compressors. They're getting a little hard to come by right now, especially these ones that lay way over on their side. The MCIs and the Prevos both use them like that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna need to get some of these cores sent and find a good compressor shop to rebuild them, and then we'll have some, hopefully, in stock here all the time. <laughs>